Joe Salzone, are you with us on the air? I sure am, Dave. Hello, Joe. Yeah, I was just on the phone with Jeff Goodman, whom you'll, you will remember well, and he was reminiscing I a do. bit about Dave's Gone By. Joe Salzone was at the radio station that this program was on from the very beginning, back in 2002, um, and Joe was our engineer for a few times. He was certainly on the air a few times with us, um, and, and you've had a rather interesting life over those past 10 years in and out of radio and now back in radio, which I'm very, very happy to hear. So first of all, I guess the, the, the first question is, how have you been, Joe Salzone? Well, Dave, I've been just fine. Uh, I have a, um, a wedding that I'm going to in a few hours, and I still have to pack for a, a wonderful new chapter in my career that I begin on Monday. Okay, well, first of all, whose wedding? I'm sorry? Wh- whose wedding? Who's getting married? Oh, it's my cousin. Not really looking forward to it, but I have to go. Oh, nice. Very nice. Um, okay, so that's, that gets that question out of the way. Now, what are you packing for? Well, Dave, uh, as of Monday, I'll be the new co-anchor of a morning news radio program in upstate New York. Uh, I believe technically my first day on the air will be Wednesday, but uh, the first couple days will just be uh, getting acquainted and and, uh, getting up to speed with the technology. I understand that on noon on Monday, there will be a lunch given uh, as a way of welcoming me to the team. Nice. Nice, yes, that's, bro. That's uh, a lot more than uh, I've ever received in the 13 years I've been in this uh, unusual business. <laughs> yeah, I, I never even bought you a burger. I, I never did crap for you. So, so the fact that you're getting yeah. a free lunch. I think you bought me a cup of coffee once. Did I really? You owe me, you so. owe me like a dollar thirty then. Wow, I forgot to ask about the back. Um, so, so tell me, what are when you say you're going to be a co-anchor on this new station? Uh, what what will your ac- actual duties be? You'll be on the air, obviously, but do you need to do news gathering? Do you uh, what do you have I'll, to I'll do? I'll be in charge of uh, writing, producing, editing, uh, anchoring, and reporting uh, all the news uh, for a particular area. Um, I'll mm-hmm. also be tasked with uh, attending town hall meetings and, and uh, local events, uh, gathering as much audio as I can so I can um, hand it over to the afternoon anchors uh, so they can do with it what they wish uh, for their time on the air. Uh, so I'll, I'll more or less become uh, what I've been accustomed to being, which is a one-man newsroom. Neat. Do you know what the um, what's the listenership on the station that you're going to? Dave, that's a really good question, and I wish I had a, a firm answer. I know that it, it's a smaller market, and, and ratings in small markets are are tough to come by, and, and even tougher now that Arbitron has uh, has been replaced more or less by these um, personal people meters or whatever they're called. Uh, but I do know that for the area, it is uh, very highly rated, and it is covered over six or seven different stations. Uh, so it's a rather broad swath of uh, potential listeners. That's 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 wicked cool. And you're you're doing the real radio life, something that I never did. And that is, you have a job. You know, you're lucky enough to get a job because you've been right now, or you just left a job at. Uh, college, right? You're you're running yes. programming director for a college radio station. In, yeah, um, Friday was my was my final day. Yeah, wow. And and so now you're just picking up and moving. That's what radio does. It, it, you move here, you move yeah. there. You spend two years, three years, half a year, boom, 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 and you're doing it. Do you have an apartment? Do you do you, you know what, what's your living situation come Monday? Well, at least for the first couple of weeks, I'll be staying with a couple of friends. I have an appointment uh, Tuesday afternoon to see an apartment. And uh, I know some people spend many, many weeks searching for one. If I like it, I'll just say yes. Oh, well, I hope the uh, the landlord isn't listening. <laughs> hmm, I'll, I'll ask uh, eighteen hundred a month. Why not? You know. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, given the the area. It, it's a younger area. It's sort of a, a college town, so I imagine that rent will be um, on par with. Uh, the income of the average college student. Oh, okay. Hmm. Hopefully, 
That, that would be that would be oh. lucky for you. <laughs> that would be real yeah. good. Um, can I ask you some of the, the – before we get to some of your memories of doing my show and, and doing it at the radio station that we all started at back in, in New York, were, what are some of your best memories of the job that you just had being the programming director at the college station? Because I was programming director here at UNC Student Radio for two years. So I'm wondering well, what you're. Yeah. Then you'll you'll understand this since you and I um, have this same level of responsibility. I'm going to miss uh, working with students most of all and uh, helping them develop their own uh, skill set for for radio and television. Um, I won't miss the paperwork and the bureaucracy and the red tape that I had to uh, sort of muscle my way through, but I'll miss the students and watching them uh, mature as broadcasters. Hmm. That's pretty one, of, one of the nicest things I heard uh, all week was uh, um, a student that I had been working with uh, really since my first day on the job earlier in the year saying that uh, without me they, they would not have gained the confidence needed to really be uh, successful in, in anything. Uh, and that was that was awfully nice to hear. Wow! And then I gave him a hundred dollars uh, <laughs> for saying it. Hey, if I say something nice to you, will you give me a hundred dollars? No. Uh, okay. Oh, I'll, I'll buy you a dollar thirty cup of coffee. Then we'll be even. Well, that oh okay that that that's fair. I'll I'll, I'll accept. That's more than I've made in most of my years in radio. You know, a dollar yeah. for a dirty cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you and me both. So, what are your memories of? My show and doing being on my show and engineering for my show, uh, and then we'll also get to your memories of that crazy radio station we were both on back on Long Island. Oh. But any, any anecdotes, any thoughts? Well, I, I can remember the, the one the, the the main thing that really comes to mind any time I think about um, our time working together was just the the colloquy. Uh, we had a, a nice uh, we always enjoyed nice repartee off the air and and on air as well. Uh, at least well, on my end, I didn't. I don't know if you would agree. Well, no, we, well that was because we were having sex off the air. Yeah, that, well, of course. Yeah, yes, that, and you were live videotape much of it. <laughs> I uh, being introduced to Rabbi Solomon <laughs> yes. is probably one of the greatest achievements of my professional and personal life. Uh, just being able to work with such a dynamic figure uh, who um, certainly goes against the grain uh, was was always a delight. I was uh, I was always tickled when uh, the rabbi made his presence known. Literally, he was he was get behind you and tickle you under the armpits. Yeah, he would take a feather, <laughs> and and it was it was nice. It was it was wonderful. Um, and you converted, you know, didn't you? Didn't, didn't he make you convert? <laughs> I did. I, I think for one show, I did. Uh, I still have a scar to prove it. And the strange thing is, you converted uh, to Mormonism, which was really bizarre. No, no, just kidding. Yeah, yeah, I had to give up six wives, so that's, <laughs> you know a lot of alimony payments I don't have to make anymore. Uh, at least for that one day. The one thing is, is that, you know, all the years that, that the three of us worked together, I never saw you two together. Oh, oh, um, yeah. It's it's sort of like know, people think it's I, like I Superman. I know you two were very close. We were. Um, but, you know, as soon as the rabbi would come in, you would go off and, and do whatever it is he had to do. So I always wondered, is, was there friction that existed between you two? Was there friction? Well, of, of course, when, when the rabbi and I would have sex, there was, there was tremendous friction. No, just kidding. <laughs> well, no, it was a pretty simple arrangement that we had, that when he was on the air, I had to run and cover his shul. I, I had to go to his synagogue and give sermons and stuff. Because if he left the, the synagogue unattended, the congregation would just walk away with everything. I mean, they would take down the windows and the, the, the books and the, um, you know, they wouldn't leave a piece of plywood uh, and he'd come back and it'd be nothing. So he made sure that there was always somebody watching over the synagogue. So when he would come in to do his interviews and reflections, I would go to his synagogue and then, you know, he would cover the radio and vice versa. That's why you never saw us together. Well, I would have thought that his wife Miriam would have taken over while uh, the rabbi was on the air. Invariably, six and a half children. every time that, that he would be on the air, she would be giving birth again. That was the oh. thing. She was always in labor. So there was never... Yeah, always that, always that half child. <laughs> yes. 
You yeah. have a good memory. Yeah. The baby I, barrel I, too, who whose head one day will will take its uh, proper shape. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, those memories are burned in my head, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Hey, can um, I ask? I, I'll, uh, you, I don't know if you, well, you weren't there for this. Uh, the rabbi decided to uh, uh, for his ten-week uh, television show. Uh, decided to bombard people at a street fair, <laughs> at a train station. Yes. Um, I know you saw the footage, but uh, you were you were busy, I guess. And the rabbi just terrorized everyone. <laughs> and I, I remember he uh, there was someone in a porta potty <laughs> that he damn near pulled out, <laughs> and I mean there was a breathtaking shot of one explosive. <laughs> Bowel movement that uh, is also forever burned in my head and your nose. Come to think of it, oh yeah, it burned all my nose hairs right off. <laughs> and it was your bowel movement too, so that that was really yeah, deep. it was. That was that was a scary thing. It was a really bad time meal. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. I forgot you were also involved in the rabbi's TV show. That's that's. Um, I want yeah, to start I that still up again. to this day don't know how I was roped into that. <laughs> literally, you were literally roped in. I, I yeah, the, the last it, it, it was a wrangling. <sighs> we're talking with Joe Salzone on this 10th anniversary edition of Dave's Gone By. Joe, a wonderful part of the show on and off for, for about five or six, almost seven years when we were doing the program back on Long Island Radio. Any Any memories, cool or weird or funny or strange, of the, your years at that old radio station as – an engineer, as an announcer, as a coordinator, whatever. Any thoughts? I remember the first day I met you. Uh-oh, yeah. Um, you had just walked into the building, and this was, this was back when the station was, was located in Merrick, oh, yeah. uh, Long Island. Mm -hmm. And you had gotten off the train, because you, you took the train back mm -hmm. then. Right. Uh, from your house in uh, Hewlett, I Correct. believe. Mm -hmm. It's amazing, my memory. Uh, and you, uh, as I recall, you were wearing like, four layers of clothes. It was, uh, you know, it was fall, late fall. Uh, you were wearing four layers and a hat. And I just thought you were the strangest looking guy I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank well, how many layers were you wearing if it was that cold? What is, what is three I, I was layers probably wearing, normal? wearing two, but the thing is, as your show progressed, as, as, as you know, as you really got into it, you would peel back layers, so off the sweater would go, the button-down shirt. And I, I remember one day walking through the green room. You were sitting on, on the couch in a V-neck undershirt, and whatever pants you were wearing, for whatever reason, your shoes and socks were off as well. My socks? No, and I, I just my... thought, well, this, this is why you're on at 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> well, it was, it was probably also overheated in the studio itself. Um, that was the thing. As soon as it, it got a little bit cold outside, you know, they would pump the, um, the yep. heat up. And so, you know, even even this morning, I have my shirt off here at uh, at UNC. I've got my undershirt on, my V-neck undershirt. So some things never change. You know, if yeah, you're going to keep thought. it 85 degrees, I'm going to take my shirt off, you know? <laughs> and, and when I have, uh, you know, attractive female guests, I'm hoping that they will do the same thing, you know? Hey, you know. That's 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 everyone's goal. Hey, I, I would of, say as yeah. for um, memories of the station overall, I, I was there for for five years. Mm -hmm. um, we we certainly had quite a few interesting people working with us, didn't we? Yes. Uh, we had the white hip hopper. <laughs> we had the board op, who may or may not have been a pedophile to this day. I still don't know. Well, wait, wait, wait. who is that? Well, oh, oh, I know who you're talking about. Don't, don't mention names, but I know exactly. No, I won't you're... mention names. Okay, yeah. I'll just use uh, pronouns. Okay. Uh, there was our boss with the one-eyed cat. <laughs> um, I mean, and and the, the the scary thing is, Dave. You and I know this is all real. This all happened. We were there for it. Yeah. Anyone who who hears that will think we're we're making this up. It, it happened. It, these were real people. But anybody who works and, in ra or who knows radio knows that's pretty standard. Weird yeah. people gravitate towards, with, with all due respect, nutty, zany, eccentric, loner, kooky folks gravitate to radio yeah. stations. And the thing is, if they yeah, don't... Radio is full of freaks. It, that's, 
Yeah. That's a simplified version of what you're saying. We, we are, anyone who's in the business, we're freaks. We're weirdos. We're, we're outcasts. We're ne'er-do-wells. We are all these wonderful things. But did you know that as of right now, this is my 21st appearance on your show? Heck, you've been counting? Or, or did you just I, go to I my looked, website? I looked at your website yesterday, yeah. and you, know, you have archives of all the guests and all uh-huh. the shows they've been on, and I counted. Uh, I was uh, I had done 20 appearances on your show before today. So this means, you know what this means? 21 means now you can drink. I've driven Great. you to drink finally. Now you're allowed to legally, you know? You know, I, I've been carrying around this uh, this wine for, for 21 appearances, and, and I'm, I'm glad that now I can finally drink it. There you go. There, I hope it doesn't turn into vinegar at this point. Um, it probably is. I, I did buy it in Brooklyn, so it's probably vinegar uh, now. There you go. Nothing, nothing like Brooklyn vintage wine. We're talking, yeah, we have yeah. just like one or two more minutes left with Joe Salzone. Wonderful talking to you on this 20th, uh, me, the 10th anniversary of my program. Let me ask another couple of quick personal things. First of all, how's your, uh, is your dog still, uh, how, how, how is your, your weenie dog? Is Nathan still around? Uh, Nathan passed away earlier in the year. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, oh. He uh, was was experiencing a great amount of of pain, so uh, he was. Um, well, you know. Yeah. Oh no. no okay. um, I, I'm sorry. The others that. are still around. My parents adopted uh, a larger dog. The barking that you hear in the background actually is uh, the newer dog. Oh. Uh, watching leaves fall or whatever the hell he's barking at. What kind of dog? Um, what, what it's kind? an Italian Mastiff. He's about he's twenty pounds heavier than I am. Oh, he's my. a very very big dog with a with a head the size of a basketball. And I wish I was exaggerating, but I'm not. <laughs> okay. Um, and can um, I ask, is is there is there a lady person in your life these days? Uh, there is. Ooh. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we just uh, just. Yesterday was our two-week anniversary. Poor timing, unfortunately. She lives on Long uh, Island. We're going, oh, shut up, dog. <laughs> we're going to uh, <laughs> only with us. This, uh, not often do, do, do you hear dogs barking during a radio interview. Uh, on my show, we're going all the time. to uh, do a long-distance thing for a while and see how it works. Mm. That, that's a little. T- so, is she from Long Island? She's from Queens. Queens. Oh, and you're going to be what? What town are you going to be in? I'll be in Auburn. So from Queens to Auburn, it's about a little more than five hours away, which is not uh, a bad drive. Um, mm. I, I've driven longer distances. And speaking of driving days, yes, I found out a couple of days ago when you and I uh, talked on the phone briefly that you drive now. Oh yeah, <laughs> and for someone who's known you for for I guess ten years, that's an Astonishing fact. Well, yeah. I, I went 46 years of my life without driving. I mean, I had a license and all that. And for various reasons, including my, my usual Jewish cowardice, I never got behind mm-hmm. the wheel. And the fact that I worked in New York City and things like that. But coming out to Colorado, right. you have to turn into a different person. So now I actually drive a Subaru, if you can believe it. I'm behind the That's wheel of a, a utility vehicle. Well, it's not really a utility vehicle. It, it's utilitarian. It gets me to and fro. But I'm driving, man. I have been for a year and, and, and a half almost. So Do you like it? I can't, Sometimes I actually enjoy it. I, I, huh. I never thought I would ever, ever say that. But there are times it's when funny. it's pleasurable. It, hmm? it, it, it took me living upstate for three years to really enjoy driving. Down here, I hate it. Right. It's a chore. But up there, it's it's wonderful. And the traffic here is not what it was, obviously, in New York. And you just, yeah. You know, and then sometimes when you head west on the highway here in Greeley, I mean, you're staring at mountains and sunrises and sunsets, and it's pretty like, <gasps> you know, the vista that you get. And I, I mean, you can get that as a passenger too. But there's something about being behind the wheel and seeing that and heading into it with your foot on the gas. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. It, Driving, driving in an area like that can be very cathartic. Oh, yeah. I have to change my underpants like three or four times during a trip just from the excitement well, that's, of it. Well, that's, that's average for someone your age, Dave. <laughs> you know, you've gotten funnier in your dotage. You're much, much funnier than you used to be. I think that, And you were pretty funny uh, that, always. Hmm? That, that's because I'm not an, 18, uh, uh, an obnoxious 18-year-old anymore. Now I'm an obnoxious 28-year-old. 
Are you still, are you a libertarian? Are you voting for Ron Paul? <laughs> um, Ron Paul is not running. I am voting for the libertarian candidate, yes. Who is the libertarian candidate? Gary Johnson, a man who will get two votes, uh, his own and mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least they're not – well, no, I'm not, I don't want to get into because you used to be so I, – and I, I take some credit for this. Joe used to be so right-wing um, you know, in his teenage, no question about that. And I, I no. came in there pretty – I won't say 100 percent left-wing, but certainly on the left side of things and kind of swung Joe around during the Bush administration a bit. And, and uh, even though he's not a Democrat, and I'm not saying I blame him for not – being affiliated with either major party, for gosh sakes, but at least he he stopped swallowing the Kool Aid that was being dished out. I, I you know. could not, in good conscience, uh, good conscience, uh, become a Democrat because I don't see many differences at the top between Democrats and Republicans anymore. Mm. I I get that, but and, and that's a conversation for another time. Although I bought into that that whole idea of they're basically the same. That, that Ralph yeah. Nader was pushing 25 years ago. But, but that kind of thinking got people voting, you know, that it kept Gore out of office and we got George Bush instead. So you can't really think that they're both the same because they're not. They they're both are beleaguered by a lot of the same problems and are beholden to the same banks and corporations and pharmaceutical companies, but they're not the same. I mean, that, that's my political uh, thing in a nutshell. But anywho, or, well, or from a nutcase. Uh, they're all scum. Well, yes. Yeah. But we some, agree on that. Sometimes scum like me rises to the middle, and I'm very proud to say that I've done that here with Dave's Gone By. I'm very happy to say that Joe Salzone is, is a, a really great guy and a good friend of me and of this program. And all I can do is wish you wonderful success at your new radios. Can you give the call letters out? Can we go listen to you on Wednesday when you, when you get on the air? Uh, I can say that they, they can go to Finger Lakes dailynews.com and uh, listen online beginning 5.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Oh, my God. That's 3.30 yeah, I, I don't <laughs> expect you to roll out of bed at 3.30. Yeah, to not going to uh, happen. But, but can, I, can I just say, Dave, yeah. that uh, I hope we get to talk on the 20th anniversary of this show. That's, it would be my honor and my pleasure, especially if you're, you're up there in the Finger Lakes. and, and you, need a, you need a catchphrase. How's that? Get fingered by Joe Selzone. Was, <laughs> would that be a good catchphrase for you? I don't know. I, I don't think legal would appreciate that. Yeah, probably not. I would, though. Uh, anywho. <laughs> but it would be an honor. Um, and, of course, you know, when I'm back in New York or you're, you're out, if you head west, would love to see you again and uh, certainly get you back on this program every once in a while to just to do what we've just been doing because it's been a blast. So I, I, would, I would be delighted if we could do that. Well, I wish you just nothing but further success, good times, good radio for Joe Salzone. And I thank you for, for coming back and visiting the neighborhood. Dave, thanks you, uh, thank you, and, and all the best to you and Joyce. Thanks, man. Have a great one. Bye-bye now. You too. Bye-bye. Joe Salzone, the wonderful Joe Salzone, a good friend. And, and it's just, I did know him when he was a, a callow 17, 18, 19-year-old, and he's just matured in such a, a, a nice way and turned into such a, a fine person. I mean, you can just, you can just see that from the way he talks.